Okay, we've got a nice little uh, piece of equipment here today. So what's this all about? This is the guts out of an LCD monitor. So what's the story with this? Well, I was dealing with a uh, computer repair today in which I had to uh, recover a Windows XP partition on a drive, or on a computer in fact, with a motherboard from the era of the Great Capacitor Plague with about a dozen blown capacitors and they were using the onboard video so of course the video has gone now I managed to successfully I might add after about 18 hours of work clone that drive across to uh, a new hardware in fact a new hardware that only had SATA drives and I managed to even get XP working on a SATA drive <laughs> with a lot of mucking around and then the peripherals didn't work and it just dragged on and on and on long story short I got that to work uh, in the process I was carrying an old monitor out that I'd been using to test it which was getting a little senile during that process it fell from my hands and while it exploded worse than a stormtrooper's bloody firearm uh, it uh, fell to pieces and this is what I'm left with so I thought maybe I can see what's wrong with it and perhaps uh, maybe make it fire up for this but uh, really what we're doing with this now is we're going to salvage for spare parts and we'll see just what useful bits we can get out of it. So I'm trying out a slightly different camera angle uh, today so that you can see things a little bit better uh, with the sacrifice of audio. Um, if you've seen my previous videos, you might recall my frustrations with microphones. Um, but yeah, so let's see, this bit is quite loose. These look like they're the backlight plugs. So I think we can probably just peel some tape up here and flip this over. Um, the LCD module is quite uh, damaged in this, it's quite scratched up, so uh, as a result of the drop, However, I can get on to a, uh, a company that I can recommend, this is not a paid pr placement, but uh, a company called Reboot IT are um, very good in regards to getting very cheap monitors. And so I can pick up an LCD monitor like this for around about 30 Australian dollars, which, you know, you really can't beat. They're like a broken drum, you can't beat them, because they fall apart. Um, here we go. Flip this over. All right. We have really <laughs> the control board and the power supply and backlight circuit. So the problem this was having is when we would turn it on, uh, we would get a display for for about a half a second, and then it would turn off again. Um, and owing to not being able to see anything terribly obvious in this. Um, I think we're just going to salvage it for parts. There are some very nice big power diodes here, which I think will be handy for a, a new circuit that I'm designing for spare parts. And they've got very, very long legs, so we might be able to just snip them off. But you know what, having decided, looking at this, that I'm not even going to bother repairing it, based solely on the fact that there's no real obvious broken components. Uh, the capacitors aren't leaking, doesn't seem to be anything overheated, um, it could be just that the black light fluoros are gone. So we might as well dismantle all this and see what we can do with it. So uh, let's get all these quick fit connectors off and peel the electronics off. And it's at this point we need to really decide which bit we're going to dismantle first. There's a nice big ribbon connector here, we can get rid of that. And um, I wonder if you've ever seen what's inside an LCD module. I know I've seen a few, but maybe we can get that off. Now that is a nice nifty connector, I'd like that. But um, I'm going to get the right size screwdrivers and we'll be back. Okay, a couple of things have happened since you last checked in with us. And that was a couple of adjustments I made to my tripod mount with my trusty 
cheapy drill and some Robertson screws. So now we can see what's going on. I'm also removing some screws here and putting them in my rando screw container. Okay, and there's a blob of blue tack that appeared out of nowhere. It's like a grey turd. But um, something I learnt from my father that I always used to think was a little bit um, silly was his uh, habit for collecting, or he still does it, uh, his habit for collecting random screws and fittings. And I have a box full of strange types that occasionally come in handy. And I've got some uh, specialty ones if you can see, like a snake eye screw there. Um, and I've got some Torx tamp proof and I've got some one way bladed screws and all sorts of stuff. But this is interesting, this looks like it's our, this is our actual driver board which I wouldn't have expected there to be a separate chip inside the actual display module itself. That's very interesting. Well, we'll keep stripping this apart and see what happens. So uh, we'll skip to that point. Okay, I've been kind of busy. I've got most of the screws removed. And I had everything neatly laid out here. Uh, let's go over some of the stuff I've extracted so far. So I've extracted the uh, main input board. Complete with a nice little crystal that I might rip off and some resistors on high legs that I can chop off very easily. I've also taken the standoffs out of these because they're very very handy and this board might hang around if I ever come across a project that needs a replacement VGA socket. So that I'll probably keep. This I might pull off some of the bigger power capacitors, maybe the IEC socket and some of these big power diodes that are sitting in the middle of nowhere. There's also an MOV and what look like some baby MOVs or maybe some tantalum capacitors. I haven't read what they are yet. There's a big fat fuse there, but that can stay there. Um, if there's anything special about this, that might come off too. But yeah, so far, there is a bit of warmth that's been shown on the high voltage side right underneath the backlight transformer. So that could have been our culprit. If we've lost a winding, it can get intermittent in there. There's also been quite a bit of heat over in this section, uh, which right correlates with the heat sink, so that would be why they were worried about heat. Um, so we're up to the panel. We're about to pop off all the siding bits here, which because this is not going back together again, we're not losing much love over actually damaging it in the process. And now, um, we might even use a pry bar screwdriver. Um, this is my second biggest pry bar driver. I want to find out what's in here. I'll be interested if I can get a nice Polaroid sheet out of this without causing any damage to the sheet itself. <laughs> Let's not cause damage to it, he says, whilst we're trying to bend it to pieces. Uh, I think I might need this guy down here. I am interested to put, if this has got big long fluoro backlights, I'll be interested to see one of those. There we go. I think we've just broken some traps, so certainly a point of no return here. Alright, so here's our backlighting panel, and here's our LCD panel. We'll get rid of that. Uh, here we go. This is our LCD module. Uh, do I have a nice bright light source here? We should be able to see an LCD panel. Ah, I can see straight away here that when it was dropped, that panel was cracked. So this was shagged already before, um, before I decided to pull it apart. So I'm further vindicated with that. But uh, we might play with some heat or something with that a bit later. So what have we got here? And it does look like my idea of getting a Polaroid layer off that is pretty much done because it's it's glued to the surface. So what have we got in our backlight panel? How does this come apart? There looks to be some plastic clips on the front here that we can probably pry off. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera just here, but um, we might work our way around with a screwdriver. 
Now I'll work on this and we'll jump to having the panel apart. Okay, so um, we've got our panel apart and we've got the plastic covering off the top. The plastic facade, which is this thing. It's all wobbly, wibbly wobbly. Now we've got the Fresnel lens here. These are kind of fun to play with. You can do all sorts of fancy things. They make a good diffuser, but I'm pretty sure you can turn these into a magnifier for melting big things and uh, starting fires and whatnot. This is technically the diffuser here, or part of it. It's a transparent one, just to create a bit of packing space. Um, and we should have a reflective or a transparent layer next. Before we get there, I'm going to pull out the bits that I'm really excited about. If I can pull these out gently, these should be the fluoro elements. They're usually called cathode fluoros. Here we go. And inside here is a big long fluoro tube. In fact, there's two of them. I hope this can zoom in a bit. I'll just adjust my view a little bit here. If you can see that. Let's get some light where you can see these up close. Hello, focus. Come on. Let's get the focus on my hand here so that you can see these in more detail. These are glass tubes, just like the fluorescent tubes you'd see, um, except without the heater element, the cold cathodes. Um, and there's two of them in there, and there'll be another one in the other side. So let's have a look here. See if we can just ever so gently slide this out. These are interesting when you put them near um, Tesla coils and the like, they'll still fluoresce. They're quite interesting. And I do have a Tesla coil to repair. It's been here for over a year. Um, I just haven't got around to it. Well, this is another diffuser sheet. And this is the nice piece of acrylic out of the back that I wanted to use for putting in my laser cutter. Here we go. Can I get this out? Feels like it's glued on from behind. I'll have to approach from the rear. <laughs> Here we go. Now it's got a bit of a texture on the back, but this is a very nice hunk of very good optic grade acrylic and uh, nicely protected paper edges too. This will be very, very good because I intend to laser engrave into this to make an edge lit or an LED edge lit sign. Or at least that's what they're usually good for. So that, that is probably worth 40 bucks on its own to me to buy acrylic that is of nearly 12 millimeters thick. In fact, let's just check that. What do we have here? We have my digital vernier calipers. And we are looking at, well, my sense of, <laughs> My sense of measurement today is a little bit out, so that's actually technically 8mm. I'm not sure which orientation this is going to come out in. So, it's 8mm thick. That's still expensive stuff to buy acrylic like that, Special, especially nice clear acrylic like this. Oh, it's, I like feeling the bottom there. Um, and finally we have a nice piece of optic white paper on the back of it. Uh, my mother, being a photographer, can probably use some of these things. Uh, that would make a good white balance sheet. Um, that would be very good. And we've got a piece of sheet metal here, which, to be honest, I'm really not going to use. Um, but yes, I forget what brand this monitor was, but the model number was a HT190WG1-100. And uh, made in China, so yeah. That's interesting. Well, that's pretty well it for the display panel. We'll move on to the electronic harvesting. Well, I thought I'd try a quick little experiment for you guys, uh, if you've never actually seen this done before. Uh, the problem is it could be a bit of a tricky thing to film. So let's get up here. Now, I can see the viewfinder from here, and I think we can probably see that light shining through. This bit here, of course, is the LCD panel. But liquid crystal has some interesting properties of temperature. Um, some of you will probably be well aware of. You can see here, it looks like it's burning. And it's really not. 
So now if I run my fingers across the back here, you'll probably see as the temperature diffuses it'll leave streaks behind my fingers. But as it cools off, it should uh, go back to its natural state again. It'll cool down and go back to where it was. So yes, um, LCD monitors at high temperatures have severe contrast problems and some more than others. See a little dot will almost disappear now. Go back to about here. Yep, it's all pretty much gone now. And uh, just for the interest's sake, I know one of you guys will do it. You can probably almost see the pixels through here too. You see that there's all the pixels have all discolored slightly through there. I'm going to see what happens when I heat this area up. And see what happens once we hit a threshold. And we'll see what happens as this all cools down. What have we got here? You might be able to see some pretty colors come out of it if we're lucky. But I don't think this is the sort of one where that's going to work. And I also think the Polaroid is on the Polaroid is messing with my camera lens a little bit too. But yeah, interesting stuff. So uh, let's get on with the electronics. So I've started filming just in time to kick my bin over. So let's look at what we've got here. So I had this board here, which is our input board. Um, I'm going to keep that and harvest the parts uh, as needed. This board on the other hand being a little bit more open, we're going to chop some things off. Um, I also have this nice little board here with a bunch of fun to play with tactile switches and a couple of little bicolor LEDs or tricolor. And um, I do have a project running to replace some tactile switches. But again, they can stay on the board until I need them. And they're actually quite nifty in being two leg type and not the four. That's kind of handy. So, uh, and we've got a couple of leads here. Um, I may just shove them in my cable box as is for a spare cable when I need a low grade like that. Um, so, I'm using flush cutters here. Um, I hear these referred to as side cutters, whereas side cutters are actually a different creature altogether. These are designed for cutting things off flush with a board. They are fairly specific. So we can get a snip in here and remove these diodes which for the record um, are SR520s. Um, big power diodes. I'm gonna have to actually look up the exact specifics of those. Um, we can do those. Before I get too far I'll get my magic box of um, components that has a circuit diagram in there. This is my magic box of breadboard components that will be very handy in the future. Now, deciding on a spot to put them, there will do. So there's not too much that's readily retrievable from this until I get the desoldering gun on it. But um, those big power diodes will be handy. There's another little one here. Might be handy just for breadboarding. So we'll do what we can with it. It'd be nice if they had mounted that on long legs as well. But um, there is a big fat resistor on here that's way up in the air, but I'd rather leave this as a single unit because I may come across a monitor one day that will use this. Um, and I wouldn't mind seeing what's going on with that chip. Which let's, for the record, just check the serial number on that. Yeah, which is easier said than done. 
Um, in fact, that looks like um, like a four or an eight meg on board uh, non-volatile memory with a CPU all in one unit. So it's probably just everything's probably happening just on that chip, which means it's probably generic coming out of China, which leads to the thinking it might work for other stuff. So that can remain intact. Um, the rest of this board, I think as needed, I'll pull that IEC plug off, but for now it can live there. So that'll go into storage too. So that's how we salvage some useful bits out of stuff instead of just throwing it away. And it also means now that I don't have to throw most of that into e-waste, I can throw it into the scrap metal or into the recycle because it is actually back to its constituent parts rather than just being shredded for e-waste and melted in at great energy expense. So I do like to salvage what I can from dead electronics before I get rid of them. But I don't always have that time and a lot of the time it ends up uh, I have a whole trailer load of stuff and not enough time to do it. So then that does go to e-waste. But it's free to dispose here at the local uh, refuse station so that's where it goes. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting and um, Hopefully we'll see some more interesting stuff on the channel soon, if that takes your fancy. Anyway, let me know what you think about this style of stuff. I'm playing with some different video styles at the moment. And so, yeah, what you'd like, tell me. And what you don't like, I guess, tell me. Just try not to be so much of a troll about it if you can. Um, and, yeah, hopefully I'll try and cater to what you like. I don't make any money off this channel. I don't have anything monetized. Not yet, at least. So... You know, I'm not really that obliged to do anything about it, but I'll try my best. In any case, um, I'll see you later.